All right, let's fight. Are you sure? What the hell is that get up, man? I am death. Excuse me? And now you will be dead. What does that even mean? Oh, yeah, crap. Sorry, I, I meant dead. That, that's the one. Dead. Ladies, gentlemen, and tarnished of all ages, Elden Ring is full of all kinds of cool interactions, neat buffs, and interesting weapon effects. But one thing that is both simultaneously extremely powerful and somewhat useless, depending entirely on what you are fighting, is Death Blight. The status that slowly builds up and then, well, it just straight up kills you. Everyone knows about it, at least in passing. I mean, one of the most notable bugs of base Elden Ring before it was patched out was the ability to run Fire's Deadly Sin with Death Blight attached to you so you could just constantly output death buildup on anyone near you, regardless of any other inputs or actions by either of you. It was quite simply broken and absolutely terrifying to see coming at you. But then it was removed, and since then I have heard pretty much no one talk about Death Blight a whole lot. As such, today I will be fixing that. Let's have a talk about Death Blight as a status, what it can do, what in the game can apply it, if there is any any way to make it stronger, and just generally speaking, is it worth using? Put simply, when the status triggers, it will kill the person it's building up on, but it only even has an effect on a very small subset of enemies that you will face in Elden Ring. That group is players themselves. Today I get to do something pretty fun and correct the wiki for Elden Ring, as it says that Death Blight can be applied to tarnished NPCs in the same way that Madness can be, but actually it can't, it cannot. No NPC invader can be inflicted with this, and so Death Blight will literally only help you with other players. There are three ways to apply Death Blight currently available in Elden Ring, all with varying effectiveness. The first and most well-known one is the Eclipse Shotal Weapon. The skill of this weapon laces the blade itself in Death Blight so that every attack has some buildup on it, but the buildup of those attacks is generally low. Keep in mind when looking at this footage, this is against the Gold Mask set, which has a pretty average vitality, the stat that gives you Death Blight resistance. Generally speaking, the heavier the armor that you're wearing, the less resistance to the status you will have. Have. And with no resistance, these weapon hits apply around 15 per piece. And so you will struggle to trigger Death Blight before killing someone with weapon hits with a fully upgraded weapon unless you supplement its buildup in other ways. Unless, I guess, they have a big meaty shield on to stop a good amount of the weapon damage itself. But even then, because this weapon is a curved sword, it actually goes through shields to a certain extent too, a neat little specific part of the weapon class. If you want, you can, of course, also power stance these weapons. It still takes the same number of hits to cause Death Blight, but you can obviously reach that number of hits twice as fast this way. A neat little heads up though that people often miss, the weapon skill actually has a second input you can trigger to make it pop with a big ball of death blight that actually fills up the bar by around 50% to begin with so that you can actually finish the job much easier. Our target dummy gets 40 buildup from this, but someone in a less death resistant set would take right around 50, which is half of the bar filled up from a single move. As a result, this is the fastest singular way to apply death blight if you are able to get this hits off. Please avoid the superstitious panic which marked the recent lunar eclipse. To get this weapon for yourself, you need to only reach Castle Soul in the northern section of Mountaintop of the Giants, where you'll find this along the main path through the castle once you reach the Church of the Eclipse Site of Grace. There is also the Sorcery Fia's Mist, which applies approximately 20 per tick while your enemy stands inside of it, and this one is quite interesting as a concept. I wouldn't say you can really use this effectively by itself, but using it as a secondary supplement in a build would definitely work. For example, a a weapon with Gravitas to pull enemies in and keep them there is sort of fun as a combo, though still not the most effective tool in the world by any means. If you want it to work at its best, the thing that you should pair it with is actually the Eclipse Shotal itself. Using it to add its own slow buildup on your enemy while you hit them with Death Blight from the weapons as well, boosting your buildup speed quite dramatically. Again, even in this situation, unless your opponent just stands still in the middle waiting for you, this isn't the most effective thing in the world, but this combo is the strongest way of applying Death Blight in the game without dying diving into the world of bugs and glitches. As well, unfortunately, while this is a charged spell, the charging doesn't increase the amount of status buildup, only the range. And as a result, the Godfrey Icon Talisman also doesn't really do anything for it at all, as there is no base damage component for it to buff. Realistically, this sorcery, while being one of the only ways to apply Death Blight, will very, very incredibly rarely actually work for that purpose. It's just really hard to convince a living person to sit in a cloud for five to six seconds straight in order for this to actually work. If you do want to get this 
for yourself, though, it comes from the Fia questline right near the end, specifically the second last step. The third and final way of applying Death Blight that exists in the entire game, then, is an incantation called Death Lightning. This shoots out a ring of lightning around you in close range, applying around 50 from the lightning bolt itself, and then around 30 for each tick someone will receive from standing within the mist the lightning creates afterwards. While both of these numbers are quite high for death buildup, they are sort of made redundant by the third number, the actual damage of the attack itself. While it is reasonably strong for death buildup, the actual damage it does when you properly build around it is, well, enough to one-shot a player, ensuring that you are extremely unlikely to ever actually apply death blight with this incantation specifically. As well, due to the range limitations on this, it is actually really hard to even hit someone with it, especially while it's charged up. Though, hey, even when uncharged, it deals a ridiculous amount of damage to an enemy. This is very much a first world problem for this incantation, though. It literally does so much damage that the status application doesn't even matter anymore. How novel. To get this one, you need to kill Lich Dragon, Fortis Axe, and hand in his remembrance to the round table hold. Now, I mentioned it earlier, but there is in fact a bug that still exists and interacts with Death Blight in a way that is still sort of better than any of these things I've mentioned. I know, I know, it's a bug, but it exists, and so in a video all about Death Blight, it'd be weird to not talk about it. For whatever reason, crossbows and the arrows that you fire from them when in your left hand take on the properties of any weapon buff that you have applied to your right hand, and so this does of course apply to Death Blight 2. Use the Eclipse Shuttle, put on the weapon skill, stick on the pulley crossbow in your left hand, which fires a whole volley of shots with every press of the button, and while it still only applies around 15 per shot like the weapon hits would, thus being slower than the shuttle's actual weapon skill's second hit, it is a ranged weapon. A long range ranged weapon. And that means with this, you can apply it pretty damn fast from a safe distance too, with no real deterrent to it going off. It may not apply quite as fast as Shotel does on an ideal situation, but most players will have a much easier time dodging the Eclipse Shotel weapon skill than they will literal crossbow bolts. I appreciate it, but I don't accept it. With all of that being covered then, how important is Deathblight in Elden Ring? Should you be going out of your way to put it into your build? Well, the answer is no, not really. It's nowhere close to as strong as it could be, given that there are only three ways in the game to actually apply this to something, and none of them are crazy fast. It simply isn't the strongest in PvP, even as something that only affects PvP. So use it if you like, if you like the concept, and if you know what you're going against and it's someone with a shield, for example, it's a pretty good way of just putting a timer on the fight. But most people and most builds fully built up will simply be able to kill you faster than your Death Blight will affect them. The Shotel, when upgraded, will kill people before Death Blight applies just due to the damage that it does. Fia's Mist will just, well, never apply Death Blight to someone because you have to basically be trying to let it actually hit you. And if you use Death Lightning, well, you'll just kill them with the lightning part before the death part even matters. In some ways, I hope they'll add more options to take advantage of this status later on. I definitely I definitely think it is cool and interesting, but at the same time I can understand why they aren't giving us a full suite of death weapons. Balancing this is probably one of the most dangerous things in the game. If death becomes too strong, it will begin your nightmares forever and in your game every single day, but if it is too weak, it's also entirely unusable. Basically, I love the concept behind it, but unless they make it actually work against some bosses in the PvE side of the game, it's definitely not quite at the point where I would recommend making a build around it right now unless you really just like the aesthetics of it all. I hope you enjoyed this, maybe you learned something, or maybe you just enjoyed checking it out because you're curious. Do you think Death Blight is too weak, or should it stay at the point that it is to avoid it becoming way too powerful? Like if you liked the video, subscribe and hit the notification bell for more, and most importantly, ladies and gentlemen, until next time, stay sweet. Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos Dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes Bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement To take our insanity and turn it into entertainment Yes, I said entertainment twice To reiterate that it is nice To look into your faces on a mostly daily basis When you let us in your homes to make the whole world a stage Is, uh, goodbye